Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Friday. Happy Friday. It's a little cold out here in Texas. And I want to share with you guys um, something uh, that I shared with my team. And uh, because you might want you might want to do the same. So every Friday morning since COVID started, uh, our in person meetings have not been as in person. They're, they're starting to become more in person again. But we serve a large geographic area. And so we started using Zoom. And uh, we started something called Inspiration Station. And it's it's a time just for the team to connect online. It's not just a one-way meeting. We get input from a, a number of people. And so uh, it, it's, a time, it's a time of encouragement. It's a time of connection. We're out there fighting a the battle every day. And so I thought I might just uh, share with you guys you know, the same, the same message uh, that I shared with my team this morning. So I'll, I'm just going to switch here. Give me just a second. Okay, so this is, uh, this is basically it. I said, look, here's the deal. Spring is upon us. Our spring is coming right now, and, and spring is upon us. So we have, this is, our, this is our season, okay? And for us, this is a season of transition, growth, and opportunity. It's always a season. It's always a season of, of opportunity, uh, but it's a season of transition for us because we're smack dab in the middle of moving this month. And we have the next, the next three months are just going to be crazy as we get settled into our, to our new building and such. And so, uh, transition and we, we, every year we call the spring, we call it our spring wave. The wave of leads come in. Everybody is, is, uh, hungry to, uh, to get their work done. And in our, in our part of the world, uh, spring hits when, you know, with the cold weather, it's been cold. And then one Saturday, some Saturday in March, sometimes as late as April, but typically in March, people walk outside and the sun is shining and you can feel that warmth on your skin. You can just feel that warmth on your skin. And when they feel that, boom, spring hits. People start looking around at their house, looking at all the things that they haven't looked at all winter. And so now it's, now, now it's springtime has hit. And so it's an opportunity for us to, to ride that wave to, to serve a lot of people. So we are doing, as, as most of you guys are, a lot of hiring in the, uh, uh, in the first couple months of the year and training. And it's really, really busy. We may not, we not, we may not be as busy uh, running leads during that time. How, however, we've had a, a ton of, of, of requests. But our main focus, January and February every year, is training. And uh, so focusing on our, our, our growth, our opportunity, and our transition. So how are we going to, uh, how are we going to succeed in this season? Okay. And so the, it, to me, I don't want to just, I don't want to just manage it. Okay. I don't want to just manage it. I don't want to just get by. I don't want to just hold my breath and survive. Okay. I want us to master it. I want us to master it as a team. And, you know, what, what does that take? For us, you know, we, we have, um, we have systems, we have people. Okay. What is it going to take? But during this time, our, our, our systems get stressed. Our people get stressed. They're working long. They're working hard. How are we going to hold it together and deliver, uh, and deliver to our, our clients, a wow experience, a wow experience. So, uh, for us, uh, it really comes down to something called Teamly or teamwork. So teamly is this word that we made, and it's like, hey, we're a team. We're going to work together as a team, but uh, we care for each other as a family. So team and family together make teamly. Okay, and so what can you expect from you know your teammates in teamwork? What should we expect of one another? What should we expect of of ourselves? Okay, and so th- there's a few basic things. One is truth. We need to expect to speak truth, to hear truth, because, you know, all progress starts with facing the truth. That's where all progress starts. And we have to be able to speak the truth. There's a lot of teams where people won't speak the truth. They keep their mouths shut. If your people keep their mouths shut and you don't have healthy dialogue, healthy conflict, you do not have a good culture. 
Trust me, I've been there. I've been there. I've seen it in other places. And you want people to be speaking the truth. So we expect one another to speak the truth. We expect one another to receive the truth. Okay? Uh, excellence. We should expect excellence out of, out of our teammates and out of ourselves. Period. Period. Now, at the same time, we should also... Uh, expect kindness. Now, when I say kindness, I don't just mean, oh, nice, easy, pushover, all that stuff, okay? Guess what? One of my favorite quotes, to be unkind is to be unclear. And part of being kind is creating clarity. Clarity in expected outcomes, clarity when someone's doing a great job, when they're dropping the ball and they need to get back on track, communicating, handing off, and delegating with, with clarity is kind. Kindness. Of course. Now, when you think of teamwork and we think of teamly, we also think of encouragement. We're encouraging one another. We're really good at, at that around here. We ho- you know, hip, hip, hooray every time. We have a system where all the big, not all of them, but a lot of the big wins get automatically posted into our team, into our team chat uh, so that everybody can see you know, when, when, when a sale is made, when someone uh, schedules a great appointment, when someone uh, finishes out a project properly, when we get five-star reviews, that stuff just automatically comes into our team lead chat and we're always, you know, hip, hip, hooraying each other. And so that encouragement is, is there. Uh, another thing is, you know, we need to assist each other because it's easy when, when, when we are um, carrying our own load in our job during the springtime or during the busy season, it's easy for us to become, have a siloed mindset. Okay. And really it's not about me. It's about we, and everybody, everybody on the team needs to understand that if we don't all succeed, it only takes one weak link in the chain for the whole load to drop. Right? So we have to absolutely be, be lending assistance to, to our teammates when we, when we, when they need it, when we see them. Okay. Now the next thing that we, the next expectation is we need to expect that people are committed people are committed to the vision of the company. And friends, you as the business owner, it's, it's your job, it's your job to communicate, over communicate, constantly communicate a clear and precise vision of where the company's headed and what success looks like. Because if people don't have a clear exact picture, how can they commit? I mean, if, if you're playing, if you're, if you're playing baseball, okay, and you want people to score. You want them to slide into home. They have to know exactly where home is. You know, what, am I sliding into third or, 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 you know, or the bullpen? No, you have to create a clear picture. And a base in baseball is very obviously the, 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 the target for getting that run, right? And we have to create a clear vision. If our people just feel like, oh, I've got to go out there and work hard. I've got to go work hard. I've got to show up to work and work hard. You know, that's good to show up to work. It's good to work hard. But if your team isn't all working towards the very same goal and they have clear metrics, it's, hard, it's going to be hard to hit it, right? So if you need to expect commitment from everybody on your team, but leaders need to take responsibility for defining the parameters of what success looks like so that people then can then take ownership and commit to it. Right. And, you know, of course we expect hard work of one another. Now this last one is something I adopted from Sam Walton, founder of Walmart, and he had something called the sundown rule. Okay. And here's what that means. When, when someone uh, on our team has a request of us, they, they need us to call them back. They need us to, you know, process a piece of paperwork or pick up something, whatever it is. Okay, whatever that is, it, we're going to stay until, until we've done that. Okay, and here's, I, I saw this actually lived out in another company uh, a while back. I was, um, it was late in the day. I was at the tire shop. Okay, I was at Discount Tire. And I'm sitting there, they're, they're, um, they're working on uh, my vehicle. And someone comes in. Uh, right, right around closing. I, I, I think it was, let's say five o'clock. Okay. They come in and it's maybe four 30. They're going to close at five. What are the hours? It was about 30 minutes before. And, and they came in and they said, Hey, uh, can, can you get me in and can you get me done before closing? And the, the guy who was helping her said, helping, helping her said, said, absolutely. We only close the doors at five for you to walk in. As long as you walk in that door by 5 p.m., 
Our whole team is going to stay until the very last car is completed. So I want you to think about that. Okay, when you have people on your team that are really committed and you have a thriving culture and everybody's working together, okay, people are going to stay late. They're going to burn the midnight oil when necessary. Now, again, you can't expect people to constantly do that year round. You're just going to wear them out. But when you, know, you have to make hay while the sun shines and when it's springtime, you need your people to put in that extra work. You need your people to buck up. You know, I, I tell them, hey, you grab a case of energy drinks. And sometimes that may be physical energy drinks. And sometimes that may mean you just need some mental energy. This is the time to get it done, to go out there, to work together as a team and get this done. Okay, so that whole idea of teamily speaking truth, working with excellence, kindness, clarity, encouragement, you know, assisting, commitment, working hard and staying till the job is done making that last phone call, processing that last piece of paperwork, whatever it is, that is absolute key for us to navigate this season of growth opportunity and, and even transition for us, okay? So now here's the next piece, okay? Transparency. And this, this plays back into the other one as well, but transparency. And here's the way I want to say it. Which we're, talking about, we're talking about all progress starts with facing the truth, okay? So, you know, Proverbs 27, 5 and 6, you guys know me. You're always going to get something out of the Bible from me, okay? I got the Bible right over my shoulder right here. That is my favorite book, okay? Better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. Think about that. Being smacked in the face, punched in the face by a friend with truth is better than being kissed on the cheek by an enemy who's trying to deceive you. And the next verse 6 is, Faithful are the wounds of a friend but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. And, and when we have a thriving culture at work, our people can speak hard truth that may feel like a blow in the face. They can speak hard truth to one another because we know we care about each other. We know we're working hard together and we're there like iron, iron sharpens iron to help one another. That's what we're doing. That's what it's about. And when you have, when you have people that can be open and transparent, it's going to promote teamwork. It's going to promote excellence. It's going to promote uh, personal growth. So you need to create an environment where it's safe to speak the truth and to receive the truth. Okay. And sometimes that's going to require some coaching because a lot of times, you know, sometimes you get, sometimes someone is going to tell you something and it's really going to hit home. And the immediate response may be to get mad, to be offended. But then you have to think about it. You're like, man, they were right. And sometimes you have to eat some humble pie. All right, well, I want to tell you something, something about humble pie. It tastes a lot better when it's hot and fresh than when it's cold and old, okay? So that's us. It's, it's about teamily. It's about working together. It's about, it, it's about being open, transparent, honest, and having high expectations for us and, and each other. And it's about helping the next one along. So, you know, what are you, what are you, doing, uh, what are you doing in your company? What are you doing in your company to help your team navigate these, these uh, seasons, the high, the high season like that. I'd be curious, I'd be curious to know that's what, uh, that's what my team is doing. And uh, it's, it's working for us. You know, spring is always, always, always a challenge. And, uh, you know, we're going to get through it. Here's the, here's the beautiful thing about when we succeed at this, like our season, our season goes up in the spring and then it dips down July and August because it's hot. People are vacationing, back to school, whatever. And it picks back up again in a in a uh, September, October, and then you know tailors down for the for the holidays. And but the, the to the extent that we can capture that spring wave, also determines the the height or the lack of height of our valley that comes later. So our easiest time to grow is to catch that spring wave to catch the leads, the opportunities, the sales, and then navigate the, the, the production. And we have to wow every single customer. I don't want just a customer that is, uh, it's okay. Yeah, they're okay with it. Yeah, they paid the bill. Yeah, that's not okay. I want the customer that's going to say, man, this was the best home improvement experience I've ever had. Your guys came out, they showed up on time, they communicated well, and they did everything that I was promised. Boom. Those are the people that are going to become your, your uh, raving fans, your wowed customers. 
those are your those are literally called the promoters and so if we're going to be producing promoters during the busy spring it all hinges on how well how well my team functions together as a team if we have a bunch of uh, arrogant superstars on our team that can do this or that and they can't and they can't work together well it's failure it is failure and so we have to have the team that works together. You know, John Wooden, famous UCLA coach, uh, basketball coach, he's like, I, I don't, um, he said, I don't put the, 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 the best, you know, five players on the court. Is it five? I don't know. I'm not a basketball guy. Okay. But I'm going to put the, the team that plays together the best. And an, another way of looking at that is to say, I heard this a while back, would you rather have a collection of brilliant minds or would you have, rather have a brilliant collection of minds? Think about the difference there. It's different. So you as your business owner, you know, it's not do you have to have a superstar in every position, but they need to come together to make the best team so that you can get the best results. And, and when you create teamwork and you create it well and you delegate well, then uh, your life is going to be a lot better. Your customers are going to be happier. You're going to have a thriving culture. You're going to have a better bottom line. And life is going to be better. So anyways, man, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys listening. And if you have any, man, I just, if you have any thoughts on what I said, I'd love to hear them. Comment back, chat me up, whatever. And we'll see you again next time.